We are back in the word and we are still dealing with Israel. Yesterday's glory, yesterday's testimony, a thing of the past. Yes, we had it going on. No one can take that from us. No one can take that from Israel. But we're going to deal with nationalism. Nationalism is something right now that is dominating our culture. Nationalism, okay? Ain't nothing wrong with loving your own people. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But some of us, we are going to the extreme and we going crazy. All right, so I want to show a clip of Julius Malima. All right, he does have love for his own people, you know, and I honor that and I like that. But also, he has love for the Palestinians. And many of our Israelite, so called Israelite leaders, are trying to make Blacks, Hispanics, okay, if you identify yourself as the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man, okay, or if you identify yourself as Israelites, however, these leaders are trying to make us not have any compassion for the Palestinians and what they're going through. So I'm going to show a clip. How do you bomb a hospital? Even if the president of Hamas ran into that hospital, is hiding in that hospital, you can't bomb that hospital. How do you bomb a refugee camp? Even if Hamas ran into that refugee camp, you are in no position to bomb a refugee camp. Comrades, those guys are involved in ethnical cleansing. They want to wipe off the Palestinians. This is a genocide. It's an international crime. And ICC must issue a warrant of arrest against Netanyahu. Why do you issue warrant of arrest on Putin who has not done worse than what Netanyahu has done to the people of Palestine? All right, so here... You have a black man standing up for brown people. That is honorable. That is something that all nationalists, okay, that are black, had in common. We always stood up for the Palestinians. Now I'm going to show another clip. It's in a song. But this man, okay, when you talk about nationalism, when you talk about a person who doesn't like Edom, who loves his own people, okay, this guy, he literally makes Malcolm X sound like a teddy bear. This is how involved this man was in loving his own culture. And he hated what Edom, and we call Edom, the so-called white man, he hated what they did to us so bad, okay? Not to bring all that up, but I still wanted to just show you even how he still had respect for the Palestinians. Oh, to them! I read Chancellor Williams. Chancellor Williams in his book, The Destruction of Black Civilization, said that those areas change from black to brown to white. And so we take the side with the Palestinian now. That man, Kali Muhammad, okay, that man was a nationalist, for real. And he even said, we take the side with the Palestinians now. Now, that is deep, okay, because a lot of these Israelite leaders of these camps, what they own is something new, okay? Malcolm X, all the leaders, the great leaders of the past, they all had love for the Palestinians, 
what happened, okay? So now we want to get back into our study, and we're going to be talking about Israel and how we used to have it. Now, I want Exodus 11, 7 to be read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue, against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. All right, so that's how good we used to have it. All right, I want to give you the good news translation. It's on the screen because a lot of people, we can't really understand the King James fully. So we're going to break it down for you with the good news translation. Somebody get that. But not even a dog will bark at the Israelites or their animals. Then you will know that I, the Lord, make a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Wow. Man, we had it going on. We had it going on. Not even a dog will bark at the Israelites or their animals. Okay. Is that true today? No. That is not true. Okay, the black man is the number one suspect, okay? He is locked up more than any other race of people, okay? And the Hispanic as well, okay? He is locked up along with the Native American Indians, okay? They are locked up more, okay? But the black man is leading, okay? And he is leading in cop killings, okay? So we know for a fact that the Israelites were black, okay? Moses was black, okay? Um, Jesus was black, so the Israelites couldn't have been white, okay? If we were to go by the Hadiths, okay? And the Hadiths say that Moses is black, okay? He was a black man, okay? Wouldn't the rest of the Israelites be black okay and the reason i say that is to show you that it's not the same the way it used to be now i want another scripture this is going to be joshua chapter 2 verse 11 this is the book of joshua chapter 2 verse 11 and as soon as we had heard these things our hearts did melt Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. So now you understand that back in those Bible days when people heard of us, when they heard of what our God did, okay, their hearts did melt, okay, their hearts melted. All right, now I'm going to show you a scripture, okay, where the Israelites, okay, their hearts melted. This is going to be Joshua 7, 5. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 7, verse 5. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebron. And smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. All right. So this is after the trespass of Achan. All right. The children of Israel hearts melted. But I want to get another scripture where the other nations, their hearts did melt. This is going to be Joshua chapter 5 verse 1. This is the book of Joshua chapter 5 verse 1. And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel, until we were passed over, that their heart melted. Neither was there spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. We had the nations afraid of us, and their hearts did melt. Okay? That's the way it used to be. It is not the same no more. You know why? Because we forsook the laws of the Most High. And I'm going to show you another scripture where we were even over Edom. Okay? But because we broke God's commandments, 
Edom was allowed to revolt from up under our dominion. This is going to be 2 Chronicles 21 and 8. This is the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 8. In his days the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. Then Jehoram went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him. And he rose up by night and smote the Edomites which compassed him in and the captains of the chariots. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. The same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. That's the part I was waiting on you to get to. They were allowed to revolt, okay? They were allowed to break away. That's what revolt means, break away from, okay? Under someone's power and you break away from it. They were allowed to revolt because we forsook the Lord God, okay? And I want to give you another scriptures because this is contrary to the rhetoric you hear every Sabbath day, every day out on the streets, the way people bring it out. They always blaming the other nations instead of pointing the finger at themselves and saying, you know what? We allowed them to revolt because we broke the Most High's commands and this is God's dealings. This is the way God dealt with us when we broke his commandments. Now let's go to Deuteronomy 28. And I want you to go to verse 48. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. All right. Ain't no wiggle room in that. You break the commandments, you are going to be destroyed and you're going to serve your enemies. Let's go to verse 15 so they know what he said. This is verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now he said these curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. Okay? These all have to do with us breaking the commandments. Once we break the commandments, then you know what? The cat is out the bag. Okay? And Israel was given up as a reproach. Okay? It was given up as a spoil to the nations. That's why he constantly kept sending us prophet, prophet after prophet. He kept sending us prophets. He kept sending us messengers. And we kept killing them. We kept killing them. And we kept killing them because we didn't want to hear it until eventually we were put under Gentile leadership. Now I want you to get verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you is going into how we always had a kinsman redeemer, okay? We always had an Israelite that can redeem us, that can buy us back out of slavery. But once we broke the commandments, Israel was in need of someone else to save them that wasn't Israel. That's why God had to send a Gentile messenger. Okay? So now we want to get back to where we was at. I wanted to go over these scriptures because a lot of people, they don't understand Deuteronomy 28. Ain't no wiggle room in it. If you obey, you will be blessed. If you don't keep the commandments, you will be cursed. OK, so all this slavery, y'all crying about, complaining about all these cop killings, all this poverty. Guess whose fault it is? It's your own fault. It's your forefathers fault, not the other nations. OK, if you really want to be brave, point your finger at God. OK, because the most high said he would do this to us. OK. The Lord is going to cause us to serve our 
enemies is what I remember reading in Deuteronomy 28, 48. Now we want to get back to Ezra. This is going to be 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 21. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 21. For God hath given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. All right, so the angel is giving it to Ezra straight. He's like, look, God gave his commandment. He let you know from the gate what you need to do to avoid punishment. All right, keep going. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things. Now, who is he talking about? Israel. Israel. Israel is who he's talking about. Israel was not obedient to the Most High. They spoke against the Most High and imagined vain things against the Most High. From their very beginning, even when God was delivering them out of Egypt, they was already wanting to stay in Egypt. Israel has always been the biggest complainers, okay? They was getting mad at Moses on numerous occasions. And the reason why Moses, the great patriarch, could not inherit the promised land is because of wicked, backsliding, disobedient, ungrateful Israel. It was Israel's fault. The man that gave us the law, gave us the Torah. The man who saw God face to face, okay? The man who talked with God face to face, rather. The one who seen God's back, okay? The man who lifted up his staff, okay? And the Red Sea waters became congealed and the children of Israel walked through dry shot, okay? On dry ground. This same man could not inherit the promised land because of Israel. And you are surprised that God took the kingdom from Israel when Moses couldn't even make it into the kingdom? The leader, the creator of the Jewish people? Okay, he did not even get to enter because of backsliding. Oh, Israel. Now let's keep going. And deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. All right. So now I want you to stay right there where you at. And I want somebody to go to second Ezra chapter one. And we're going to get that scripture where God literally says, you didn't forsake me. <laughs> you forsook yourself. You forsook your own selves. This is going to be verse 27. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 1, verse 27. Ye have not as it were forsaken me, but your own selves, saith the Lord. You didn't forsake the Most High. <laughs> you forsook your own self. Now let's get back to what this angel has to say to Ezra. Okay, this is the angel Uriel. Let's finish that. Start over at verse 23. And deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. Keep going. But his law have they despised and denied his covenants and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. They despised the law written by God's very own finger. Okay. That's deep. You rejected what God had to say. You rejected God's love letter. Okay. And not only did you reject it, but you despised it. You denied his covenants and his statutes. Okay. Israel was not faithful. So now keep going. And therefore, Esdras, for the empty are empty things. And for the full are the full things. All right. For the empty is going to be empty things. Okay. That's Israel. Israel is now empty. But for those who are hungry, for those who are full is going to be full things. He's talking about the other nations. He's talking about his chosen. He's talking about his elect. He's talking about his people. 
that Ezra has been provoked to jealousy of. He's speaking of his Gentiles. Now, I'm going to prove to you that Israel was the rich. This is going to be Luke 151. You're going to understand that God removed Israel from their position of power and put them on the bottom and then he allowed the other nations to be over them which is in agreement with Deuteronomy 28 and 48. All right, starting at verse 15 all the way through 68. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68 is the curses that will come upon Israel if they are disobedient. Let's get that. This is the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 51. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. All right, he scattered the proud. Israel is the proud. Israel was high above all nations, okay? He scattered them into all nations, okay? Let's keep going. He has put down the mighty from their seat. That is Israel. Israel was in that position of power. Israel was the mighty, okay? I showed y'all that in 2 Samuel. Chapter 1, Israel was the mighty. Saul was the mighty. Keep going. And exalted them of low degree. Those are the people that was under Israel. That's going into the Gentiles. Keep going. He has filled the hungry with good things. That is going into the Gentiles. That's going into the other nations. Remember, if I would have sent you to them, Ezekiel, they would have listened. They would have listened. But Israel would not hearken. Israel will not listen. Okay? So now we understand that this right here is speaking of the Gentile steel. Now let's keep going. And the rich he has sent empty away. That is Israel. In 70 CE, okay, they were put out of their land. Okay, they were cast out just like Jesus cast out devils. Israel was cast out. And keep in mind, there's only one nation of people that Jesus ever called the devil. I don't care how many Israelite camps lie to you and they try to give you the double meaning of Revelations 2.9. If we were to go by the Bible, okay, Jesus only called the southern kingdom the devil. Not only did he call them devils, he called them vipers and he called them serpents. Nobody else. Okay, he called Pilate a fox. Okay, he called the Greek woman a dog. But guess who had the title of being called the devil? Israel. All right. So now let's keep going. He had hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. Now that's something a lot of people don't get. They just read over that. That word hoping is literally meaning helped. He helped his servant Israel. How did God help his servant Israel? Speaking of Jacob, this is how he helped Israel. And the nation of Israel, he had to go back to Abraham. And he had to go back to Abraham's son, Ishmael. Okay? He is saving Israel through Ishmael. That's why it says he hath helped or hoping his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. Now take it home with 55. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham. And to his seed forever. He had to go back to the friend of God. He had to go back to Abraham. Think about it, y'all. Abraham is the father of many nations. Okay? He's not just the father of Israel. Okay? If it was all about just Israel, 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 he would just be the father of Israel. But Abraham is the father of many nations because he already knew, Jacob already knew, Isaac already knew that Israel was going to fall. And he had to come back all the way to Abraham. God and Abraham were friends. You think God was just going to kill all of Abraham's kids? He had kids with Keturah. Okay, that's where Midian comes from. He had a son of Hagar. That's Ishmael. Not only that, he did have Isaac. So this man, Abraham, had a total 
of eight kids, okay? You thought God was just going to let his sons just die? It's not all about Israel. It's not all about Israel. So now we want to go to Ruth 121. This is the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 21. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Let's stop right there. This is Naomi. This is Naomi. She said, look, I started off full. Israel started off full. Come on, we ate angels food for 40 years, eating the bread of heaven. Man, we were some spoiled brats, okay? 40 years. Man, we had it going on. Naomi said, I was full. But guess what else she said? Now I am empty. I'm empty. And let's see who did this to her. Let's see if Edom was the one that did this to her. Okay, let's go. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? The Most High afflicted her. Because God kept his word, okay? God doesn't lie. Deuteronomy 28 is straightforward. It doesn't care about your feelings. God's word is going to be fulfilled no matter what, okay? So Naomi is a picture of Israel, okay? And amazingly, this book is named Ruth. Was Ruth an Israelite? No. Why is this book named Ruth then? She's not even an Israelite, okay? She's a Moabite. And according to Deuteronomy chapter 23, a Moabite is not supposed to enter the congregation forever. Okay? Not even to their 10th generation. They are not supposed to enter. Now, even the nation of Edom, they could enter after their third generation in Deuteronomy 23. Okay? That's why if you really study the Bible, you'll see that according to the Bible, in the first five books, God's hatred, okay, was more towards Moab and Ammon than any other nation, okay? So the Edomites could enter into the congregation of the Lord after their third generation, but an Ammonite or a Moabite could not enter even to their 10th generation. But here we have, we have a book called Ruth, not even an Israelite. Let me tell you something. The truth is in the book of Ruth. The truth is in Ruth. God already knew that Israel was going to fail, so he kept giving us small glimpses of people being saved that wasn't an Israelite. Ruth is a picture of one. Who else is a picture of one? Rahab. 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 There y'all go. There y'all go, man. Y'all brothers need to study. Y'all need to study. All right, man. Y'all going crazy. Knock it off, man. Knock it off. Man. I got these girls too happy around here, man. Who else? Achior. Achior was not an Israelite. And the Bible says that he was circumcised and joined to the house of Israel. Okay? That's going to be in the book of Judith. Okay, that's going to be in the book of Judith for you apocrypha lovers. Okay, not only that, the Bible says he prophesied. <laughs> he prophesied. And you have these Israelite camps prove that Israel is the only prophets. Prove that Israelites is the only prophets. Prove that Israelites is the only servants. Y'all all off. The Bible even calls the king of Babylon his servant. <laughs> Cyrus was his servant. So it just goes to tell you that God had already seen that the other nations was going to come in and he kept giving us little sneak peeks. So good job. Good job, y'all. So now let's go to second Ezra chapter seven, verse 33. And Ezra thought his prayer could get them out of this. Ezra was persistent. He was constantly fasting praying and trying his best to deliver his people Israel he pulled out his beard his hair I mean he was rolling around in the dust ashes 
and saying all this stuff about Israel and the angel just kept saying, look, Israel broke the covenant. OK, God is going to be faithful to his word before anybody. OK, the Bible says that he has magnified his word above his own name. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he spoke it, he's going to make it good. Let's get that. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 33. And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment, and misery shall pass away, and the long suffering shall have an end. But judgment only shall remain. Truth shall stand, and faith shall wax strong. And the work shall follow, and the reward shall be showed. And the good deeds shall be a force, and wicked deeds shall bear no rule. See? And here we have, okay, before we get into Ezra's prayer, the angel still laying it out. He's like, hey, the most high is going to have judgment. Judgment begins at the house of God, okay? God is all about good works, okay? She brought up Rahab, and that's the reason why Rahab was saved, because she had good works. Not only was she saved, she was allowed to marry a Judah man. <laughs> she had an Israelite husband. And they both are in the genealogy of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 1. I wonder how that happened, okay? So now we want to keep going. Verse 36. Then said I, Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites, and Moses for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness. Keep going. And Jesus after him for Israel in the time of Achan. Okay, that is going into Joshua. That's not Jesus. That is speaking of Joshua. Okay, but that's how you say Joshua in Latin. Okay, so let's keep going. And Samuel and David for the destruction, and Solomon for them that shall come to the sanctuary. And Helias for those that received rain, and for the dead, that he might live. All right, that is going into Elijah. Okay, keep going. And Ezekiah for the people in the time of Sennacherib, and many for many. That is the Latin name for Hezekiah. Okay, so he's bringing up all these great men that prayed when Israel backslid. And he's wanting that same mercy. Let's keep going. Even so now, seeing corruption has grown up, and wickedness increased, and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Wherefore shall it not be so now also? He is constantly trying to go to bat for Israel. All right? Keep going. He answered me and said, This present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore have they prayed for the weak. All right, so he's still not giving Ezra the answer he wants. Okay, I want to go to 2 Ezra chapter 7 verse 59. Let me tell you something. God's judgment is sealed. When God makes up his mind, can't nobody change it. Can't nobody change it. Somebody get that. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. He brought him back to Deuteronomy. Moses told y'all, you better choose life. You better choose life. What you want the most high to break his word? No, he had to end the covenant with Israel and start a new covenant that included the Gentiles because the Israelites broke his first covenant. Okay, so now let's keep going. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him. No, nor me, which has spoken unto them. They didn't even believe the angel. They didn't believe the prophets. They killed them. That's proof they didn't believe them. Okay. The Bible is full of corruption. We're missing books. The book of wars. The book of Nathan. The book of Jasher. The real authentic book of Jasher. Okay. We missing that. So we missing a whole lot of stuff because Israel failed to preserve the text. Okay. So keep going. That there should not be such heaviness in their destruction, as shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. All right, so now I want you to go to the next chapter. And I want you to go to 2 Ezra 8.15. You're going to see that Ezra is still mourning. 
okay? He is still standing in the gap. He's like those old Christian songs that's like, It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. He is constantly just going back and standing in the gap. Let's keep going. This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 8, verse 15. Now therefore, Lord, I will speak, touching men in general. Thou knowest best. But touching thy people, for whose sake I am sorry. He's apologizing for Israel. Keep going. And for thine inheritance, for whose cause I mourn. And for Israel, for whom I am heavy. And for Jacob, for whose sake I am troubled. He still. He's just like, man, I'm going to die on the wall for Israel. I ain't going to let go. He is just constantly going in and going in and going in, okay? But now you're going to see. That the Bible literally says, let the multitude perish that was born in vain. Now, I hear a lot of people bringing that scripture out, okay? Even a bishop, and they are literally talking about Edom. But let's keep reading. This is going to be 2 Ezra 8.55. Verse 55, and therefore ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. That is talking about Israel. Because he's constantly bringing up Jacob. He's constantly bringing up the Israelites. And the angel said, hey, shut up with that. Those folks are gone. Okay? Don't ask me no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. Keep going. For when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High, thought scorn of his law. Who was given the law? Israel. Israel was given the law. Israel was given the law. Let's get that precept. Yeah. They are hot. All right, y'all. Dang, dang. Y'all going in. Yeah, so we're going to get that. And I want the one in Psalms. I want the one in Psalms. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 147, 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He showed his word to Jacob and Israel. Keep going. He had not dealt so with any nation. That's all I need. That's why he had to tell Kadar to sing a new song. And he told Israel, your songs are going to be turned into mourning, lamentation, and it's going to cease. Why? Because this is not going to be true no more. <laughs> All the other nations are coming in. That's why he says, sing a new song. Sing a new song. And he wasn't talking to Israel. He was talking to Ishmael. That's why the songbook had to close. I was so excited when the Most High showed me that, okay, a couple months back. Now I get it because there's Psalms that are not true no more because he went to other nations. He went to other people. We done now. We went past our time. We're going to pick back up and we're going to still be talking about the multitude that perish. Was he speaking of Israel or was he speaking of other nations? Y'all already got an, enough clues to know the answer. But now is about that time for us to get in these scripts, shall we? We shall.